hi, welcome back to this week's presentation of Math 6 for the week of June 8th on BCPS TV. I'm your host, Ms. Barr. If this is your first week tuning in, I'm going to start by quickly giving a little information about myself. On your screen, you'll see a picture of me, Ms. Barr. I'm a secondary mathematics resource teacher for BCPS. My husband, Scott, who is a machinist for the DC Metro. My three sons, my two bonus sons. One is Bruce, a seventh grader at Arbutus Middle. Charlie, a third grader at Arbutus Elementary. And Kevin, our three and a half year old. Together, we love to eat pizza, go to the movies, play and watch baseball, and we very much enjoy the outdoors. So what will we learn this week? This week, we will review ratio reasoning. Students will review different ways to represent and solve ratio and rate problems. This includes methods of drawing diagrams, double number lines, ratio tables, and tape diagrams. We will also then use our ratio reasoning to scale up and scale down ingredients when cooking and baking. Okay, friends, so this week, think about it, is an image on your screen, and we are to describe the image using two ratios. So what are two ratios that describe the types of animals in this collection? This week, I asked bonus son Charlie his response, and remember, he's in third grade, and here's what he had to say. That there is a ratio from six to 12 animals. Okay, what was the six? The six was there are six dogs. And 12 was what? 12 was the dogs, hamsters, and cats all combined. All okay, right, great. You're welcome. So let's review ratios. What are ratios? A ratio is an association between two or more quantities. For example, say we have a drink recipe made with cups of juice and cups of soda water. Ratios can be represented with diagrams like the one below on your screen. Juice and soda water seen here represented with the diagram with green and white squares. Here are some correct ways to describe this diagram. First, the ratio of cups of juice to cups of soda water is six to four. We can visually count that on our screen. Second, the ratio of cups of soda water to cups of juice would be four to six. Both of those accurately represent this diagram. And the third and final way would be that there are three cups of juice for every two cups of soda water. These are just three ways to correctly describe this diagram. Can you think of any more? Here's an example of how to use ratios. There are four horses in a stall. Each horse has four legs, one tail, and two ears. Draw a diagram that shows the ratio of legs to tails and ears in the stall. Here's the diagram that I drew. We can use diagrams to answer some questions about ratios. So for example, the ratio of legs to ears to tails, what would that be? Well, in this case, I would just count them all up. There are 16 legs, eight ears, and four tails. Therefore, the ratio is 16 to eight to four. In our last example, we only had two quantities. In this one, we had three. There are two ears for every tail. You'll see here with the circle, I have indicated where I found the ratio. And there are two legs for every ear. Again, a horse has four legs. So if I'm trying to determine two legs, I'd have to cut everything in half, which means there are two legs for every one ear. Now let's investigate representing equivalent ratios using a double number line. Let's say that the sixth grade class is selling raffle tickets at a price of $6 for five tickets. Some students may use diagrams with shapes to represent the situation like we did on the previous slide. But exa for example, here's the diagram representing 10 tickets for $12. If I wanted to answer questions 
with larger amounts, drawing diagrams could get really um, time consuming. So a double number line is going to be your best option here. Here is a double number line that represents 10 tickets for $12 and um, 15 tickets for $18. What do you notice about the double number line and the patterns for price in dollars? Looks as if it's increasing by $6 every time. What do you notice about the number of tickets? It looks like every time it's increasing by $6, the tickets is increasing by five. We're going to use that information to answer some questions. So stay tuned. Using the same information we just looked at about the sixth grade class selling raffle tickets, we're gonna answer a few questions. Let's recall the double number line we just saw. The question is, how many tickets can you get for $30? Well, I can't find that information on my double number line, but one of the great things about double number lines is that you can extend them and continue your pattern to get an answer. So here I've extended my double number line and we're going to use the pattern that we noticed from the beginning about adding six to get our next values on our double number line. So I went from 18 to 24 to 30. And we're going to do the same on the bottom. This was a pattern of adding five each time. So I go from 15 to 20 and 20 to 25. So how many tickets can you get for $30? Well, continuing my pattern on the double number line, I can see that I can get 25 tickets if I have $30. The next question says, what is the price of one ticket? Well, again, I can't really see that on my double number line. But what I can do is in between zero and six, I can divide that into five. And you'll see that each tick mark on my double number line is going to represent $1.20. Therefore, the price of one ticket we found by doing six divided by five to give us $1.20 for one ticket. In this section, we're going to use tables to organize equivalent ratios. Double number lines are hard to use in problems with even larger amounts than what we just noticed. So let's think about that same example where we are looking at $6 for five raffle tickets. If we try to continue and extend that double number line to maybe represent the price of 300 raffle tickets, it would take a lot of time. So a ratio table is really our best option here. So you can see the double number line, in this case, I went up to 60 and 50, but still I would have to continue that for a very long time. So we're gonna use a table, which is going to be a better choice for the situation. So here's how our table works. We first insert the information that we're given. So I know that $6 is going to give me five tickets. You'll notice that I then divided by five to get the unit price, which is $1.20 for one ticket. And then I can multiply both sides by 300 because one times 300 will give me 300 tickets. So I'll take the price of one ticket times 300 and I will get that 300 tickets will cost $360. Now let's take a look at using a ratio table with a different problem. At a constant speed, a, a train travels 45 miles in 60 minutes. At this rate, how far does the train travel in 12 minutes? So what we're going to do first is divide each by 60 because what that's going to do is give us a unit rate. So what 60 divided by 60 is one, and 45 divided by 60 is 0.75 or 75 hundredths or three fourths of a mile. Those are all the same number. Now, what can I do next? Well, next, since I'm looking for how far it will travel in 12 minutes, I will take my unit rate and multiply both by 12 to give me nine. So this train that originally had a speed of 45 miles in 60 minutes can travel nine miles in 12 minutes. And that's how fast we can solve a ratio and rate problem using a ratio table. So now we're going to investigate part-part whole ratios with a focus of tape diagrams. So tape diagrams allow us to think about ratios between two quantities and also their connection between the total. 
So here's an example. The ratio of adults to kids in a school is two to seven. If there are 180 people in the school total, how many of them are adults? Here's how I would draw a tape diagram to represent the ratio of two to seven. This does not look unfamiliar. We should be pretty confident in drawing a diagram that represents that ratio. Now, when we are trying to figure out how many of them are adults, one thing I need to know is that all of those pieces total 180. Well, there are two adults and seven kids as parts, which means there are nine parts to my total. If I had 180 people divided by nine, that means each of those little sections are going to represent 20. Now, if I need to determine how many of them are adults, 40 of them would be adults since each part of my tape diagram represents 20. And this is a visual that can help us relate part, part, and whole. Let's try another example. In this example, a recipe for chicken marinade says, mix three parts oil with two parts soy sauce and one part orange juice. If I need 42 cups of marinade in all, how much of each ingredient should we use? Well, the tape diagram represents the parts indicated from the problem. And I know that I have 42 cups total. When I take 42 cups and divide it by the six parts I see, I will find that each part represents seven. Therefore, I will need 21 cups of oil, 14 cups of soy sauce, and seven cups of orange juice. Now we just reviewed a lot of information about methods to solve ratio and rates, such as diagrams, ratio tables, double number lines, and tape diagrams. Now it's your turn to show what you know. And remember, you can do it. Our second, our second think about it for this week, we're gonna be talking about food. So would you rather, would you rather buy a package of waffle mix for $4.99? or buy a package of frozen waffles for $2.79. Think about which one you would select and why. Again, I asked my bonus son, Charlie, which one he chose, and here's what he had to say. I would buy um, four, waffle mix for $4.99 because you, can make stuff and you can make dreams come true with your taste buds rather than regular frozen waffles. You're welcome very much. In our first example, we are going to focus on brownies. One batch of brownies calls for one box of brownie mix and the ingredients shown below in the table. There are different types of brownies that you can make, fudge-like and cake-like, and depending on what you're going to make, you're going to need a different amount of ingredients. Well, what amounts of eggs, water, and oil would I need in order to make two batches of fudge-like brownies? We're gonna need to double the ingredients in fudge-like brownies. Here is the information needed from the table for fudge-like brownies. First, let's focus on eggs. It requires two eggs to make one batch. So in order to make two batches, I'm going to double it. So two times two is four eggs. Next, let's look at the water. If one batch calls for a quarter cup, and I'm doubling that, a quarter times two is a half cup of water. Lastly, if I'm looking at oil, which is a half cup, and I'm doubling that, I now need a full cup of oil. And that is how we are going to take one batch and double it to make two. Using the same information from the last problem, now we're going to determine how much I would need of each ingredient to make three batches of cake-like brownies this time. So if I want to make three batches, a simple way to do that would be to triple all of the ingredients of cake-like. Here's the information from the table in regards to cake-like brownies. First, let's look at the eggs. 
The one batch requires three eggs. So if I am tripling my ingredients, then three times three is nine eggs total. If it's a quarter cup of water still, then I'm going to triple my ingredients. One quarter times three is three fourths of a cup. And lastly, if I have a half cup of oil and I'm tripling that, so multiplying it by three, I get three halves, which is the same as one and one half cup of oil. And by doubling and tripling your ingredients is an easy way to make two or three batches or even four or five, six further on to come up with the ingredients you need. In this example, the double number line shows the amount of flour and eggs needed for one batch of cookies. So we're gonna complete the double number line to determine the flour and eggs needed for two, three, and four batches of cookies. The double number line indicates that there is five cups of flour and three eggs that are needed for one batch of cookies. Following this pattern of adding five, I'm going to complete the flour for two, three, and four batches of cookies. Following the pattern for number of eggs with adding three, I'm going to complete the double number line for the number of eggs. We're going to use this information to answer some questions on the next slide. Here's the double number line that we created on the previous page. Now let's use it to answer some questions. What is the ratio of cups of flour to eggs? Well, that is given to us right here in our double number line for one batch of cookies, which is five to three. How much flour and how many eggs are used in four batches of cookies? Well, if five, three is one batch, then 10, 6 would be 2, 15, 9 would be 3, and 20, 12 would be 4 batches. So I would need 20 cups of flour and 12 eggs. How much flour is used with 6 eggs? Well, I can find that information right here in my double number line. 6 eggs would need 10 cups of flour. And the last question, how many eggs are used with 20 cups of flour? Again, we found that in the fourth batch, which would be 12 eggs. This is a great visual representation to recognize patterns and be able to answer some questions using ratio reasoning. In our last example, we're going to look at the ingredients used to make instant mashed potatoes that are shown on the back of the box. Now we're gonna use the directions and ingredients on the back of this instant mashed potato list and we are going to answer a question. What do I need to do if I want six servings of potatoes? This always happens to my family. We always need five servings and that's never listed on a box. So six is also not listed on this box. So what could I do? Well, the great thing about ratio tables is that you can add within a table as well as multiply in order to get an equivalent ratio. So here's two suggestions in order to get six servings. One, you could either add two servings and four servings together to get six, or we could take the two servings and multiply it by three. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to add. So for six servings, we're gonna look here, we're gonna add for two and four. So let's focus on the potatoes. We're gonna add a half and a cup to get a cup and a half of potatoes. Then for water, we're gonna add three quarters and one and one half cups to get two and a quarter cup. For milk, we're going to add one quarter and one half. That gives us three quarters. And lastly, for margarine, we're gonna add one tablespoon plus two tablespoons, which gives us three. And we would get the same results if we multiplied the servings by, the two servings by three. So it's going to be your choice as to which is going to be easiest for you. So in our final example, we're gonna use the same directions and ingredients listed on the back of our instant mashed potato box this time to find 14 servings. You can find 14 servings by adding two servings, four servings, and eight servings together, or you can multiply two servings by seven. I'm going to show you that method this time around instead of adding. This time we're gonna multiply two servings by seven. So for potatoes, I'm gonna take a half a cup and multiply it by seven to get three and a half cups. For water, I'm gonna take three quarters of a cup multiply it by seven, that's going to give me five and a quarter of a cup. Then I'm gonna take milk, which is a quarter of a cup, times seven to get one and three fourth cups. 
And lastly, the margarine is one tablespoon and one times seven is seven tablespoons. So again, you see both methods of whether you could add or multiply to get the answer that you want, which is an equivalent ratio. Now it's your turn to show what you know about scaling up and scaling down in order to cook or bake the most delicious meal or dessert. Enjoy. Let's review what we did learn today. We reviewed different ways to represent and solve ratio and rate problems, such as diagrams, double number lines, ratio tables, and tape diagrams. We also used our ratio reasoning to scale up and down ingredients when cooking or baking. I think we met both of those objectives. What do you think? Well, friends, that's it for this week's version of Math 6 on BCPS TV for the week of June 8th. I'm your host, Ms. Barr, and I miss you already. I hope you guys reach out to your teachers if you have any questions and have a great relaxing rest of the school year and summer.